Well, my name is Johnny. I'm an addict. Hey. So, um, I was born in Salem, Oregon. Um, I was a drug baby. I was born six weeks early, four pounds, 13 ounces. Um, I was released from the hospital and three days later had to be brought back into the hospital, put back in the incubator for a month, uh, 45 days, and then got to go home. Um, and then I grew up in Mount Angel, um, a middle class family. Um, both parents worked for a while. And my mom decided to stay home, be a stay at home mom, kind of try to do the homeschool thing, but uh, that didn't work out too well. My mom's kind of crazy. Um, she's an she was an alcoholic, uh, drug addict. My dad was an alcoholic. Um, I have two sisters, one brother. Um, every one of us, well, every one of us has been addicts. We're all addicts um, and alcoholics. So, um, my parents, my dad worked a lot. They fought a lot, so he just stayed gone. And so I didn't really, I didn't really grow up with him. I didn't get taught anything. And he, I didn't, you know, I, went, I remember one fishing trip, that's it. Um, my mom, all I remember was just, she's just crazy and they just always fought. So um, I kind of became independent pretty young and just stayed away. Um, I started getting in trouble at a young age. Um, my parents divorced when I was 10. And it started off like I just got a couple skateboarding tickets and had to do some community service. But then the police in Mount Angel started coming to my house a lot. So I realized at that moment, like, I'm not scared of the police. So what the hell is really going to happen? And so I just kind of did whatever I wanted. My mom moved to Salem and uh, started using drugs. Um, and so my dad was raising us, but he always was gone, always worked. Uh, didn't know how to uh, really cook or anything, so he just fed us fast food every night when he got home. Me and my little brother and my little sister, we all plumped up, got a, a little fat. But um, So that was an insecurity of mine when I was a little kid. But um, see, I started, I started acting out after the divorce. Um, I would go into the store, steal anything and everything. I started smoking at nine, started drinking and smoking weed at 10. Um, so I'd go into the stores and steal cards of cigarettes, anything I could get my hands on really. I'd steal candy bars and then go to the neighbors and sell them all saying it was a school function and just get money. Um, and the cops would always kept coming to my house looking for me. And then I just, I started progressing. I liked trouble. Um, it got me attention. And so I seek that attention. Started shattering windows out of the schools, breaking into the schools, um, you know, just stuff like that. Um, eventually, I started hanging out with some friends in Mount Angel. We started going to Woodburn a lot. Um, I ended up getting beat into a gang at 10. Um, so I was kind of, kind of their, um, I'd go start the fights, talk a bunch of shit, and then we had the little fun game of jumping everybody and all that type of shit. So I, I, and I enjoyed that stuff. I liked, at the time, I liked hurting people. I liked seeing it get done. Um, but uh, eventually, we were, I, I started getting in a lot of fights at school, and eventually my dad just took us out of Mount Angel because anything that happened there, they just automatically, cops automatically came to my house, and even if it wasn't me. So um, my brother started doing the same thing. And um, so we moved to Salem when I was 12, and we moved on to we moved to Silverton Road right by Corden. So um, I went to Waldo, and I I was still chunky at the time, and I just I just hated myself at the time. And um, so I started finding people that were like me: um, smoke weed, drank, and I found a new group of friends, and started just getting into trouble right away. Uh, it was 12 the first time I went to JDH. I got arrested at Skate Palace for fights and throwing water balloons out the rink, whatever. And um, so I went to Juvie and I was scared shitless when I got arrested for the first time, actually put in cuffs and brought down there. And when I got there, it was a joke. I was just like, this is it. This is what I'm scared of. So that became my new home. I was there to 18. Um, I mean, I was in and out all the time. 
I actually enjoyed it. Um, it was kind of a way for me to get away from my family. Um, you know, eight days at a time or 15 days at a time. As, it, as I progressed in my crimes, it got more longer, you know. Um, let's see. I started already getting into the gang stuff in Salem, different gang stuff. Um, and so at 13, I found Crank and tried that and realized it was going to get me skinny. So, of course, I took off of that. I'm like, anything to get skinny, that's cool. And I, I, I started doing Crank. Um, I did that off and on until I was 20. So, um, but I mean, I dabbled in everything. Anything, anything that anybody had, I would do it. I want to try it. I want to check it out. You know. So, um, I ended up at let's see, 14. I ended up kind of. That's when the whole West Side Mafia thing had started. Um, in Salem kind of and that's when I ended up running with that crew and really getting into some shit um, uh, Let's see I'm gonna draw blanks now so um, At age 14 I ended up let's see actually at age 15 me and my brother um, ended up, we're going to be the first ones charged with Measure 11 in Salem. Right, two weeks after it came out, we were living, I decided to move with my mom, and she does drugs, so she okayed it. She would let us do dope at her house. Um, and she ended up kicking me out, and so I left, went up, started drinking, came, and me and my brother decided we were going to rob her. And so we went back to rob her. And then we ended up fighting, and he ended up stabbing me. And we took off running from the cops together, got caught. We're facing some time for facing Measure 11. And uh, ended up, Judge didn't want to get put me in prison, so he, at that age, so he decided to put me into my first foster home. And I ended up going to foster homes until I was 18. Um, in and out, in and out, all the time. Um, I'd run from them all the time. Um, I, always, I always had warrants. I was always on the run. Um, so I was bouncing around from my mom's, my dad's, and then all the friends. Um, once I had got on paper, I had never got off as a juvenile. I actually carried it over into adult. I was on adult and juvenile at the same time. I got a burglary charge. I'll, I'll sk I'm skipping on that. So, um, let me see. At age 15, I ended up meeting my ex-wife, and I tried to start doing good at that time because I was she was trying she's a, she was a good person, a good girl, whatever. And I tried to start doing good, but um, I ended up getting her pregnant at 15, and we ended up having an abortion, and that kind of that kind of really messed with her and messed with me a lot, and. So I just, I kind of just kept acting out. Um, I, I got real involved with the gang stuff. I, I had a couple friends murdered uh, when I was 16. One got killed, um, just opened fire on him when he was sleeping. And so, of course, there was some retaliation to that. And I have to, you know, live with that forever. But I mean, it is what it is. Um, and then I had another, I had a couple friends get murdered anyways. Um, and then at 17, I had gotten jumped real bad um, by about 25 people on Lancaster. I had taken a bunch of, a couple bats to the head, um, two by fours, uh, mag light to my face. And so I had a bunch of shattered, shattered bones, ribs, legs. Um, head and when the cops got there I was unconscious and when I woke up I tried to run get up but I couldn't and finally they they let me go and as I got about a block away I started emptying my pockets and they drew their guns and arrested me I had warrants for burglary and uh, so I had to get locked up for a while on that and um, while I was 
while I was, well, when I got locked, when I got released, um, I was still in casts and all that stuff. And um, I had called, you know, called a retaliation and some people got hurt and then they retaliated and shot back. And that was when I decided I was, I needed to leave. I needed to duck out for a while and get out of the, the situations. And um, so I moved out, I moved out of North Salem and I moved to South Salem and hid out, hid out for a while. Um, at that time, my ex-wife was about eight months pregnant. I had got her pregnant again. Um, and so I was hiding out South Salem and had my kid and I never, I never really had any, like, growing up, I, I hated my whole life. Like, I watched my mom do dope. I watched her get beat all the time, bad. And she's still with the, the guy. But, you know, that stopped eventually. But I sh he was beating her one time, and I shot him um, in the living room. So, like, that's something I had to live with forever. And... I mean, he's alive and all that, but I mean, I heard him good. And, you know, so that's something we actually just dealt with recently, talking about it, um, forgiving each other, you know. Um, actually, I, I skipped ahead. When I was 15, I was on, I was home from a um, foster home. They released me out of one of them. And then I, I can't even remember what crime I did. I did something and they put me on a, a house arrest with an ankle bracelet and um, I took off and I, and I went and got fucked up. And my mom's slipping out, PO's looking for me, cops are looking for me everywhere. And I showed up home wasted. And my mom's crazy, so she just came out, was flipping out on me, grabbed me in my face with her fingernails, and just, I had scars for years, like she just attacked me. And she actually was pregnant at the time, eight months. And um, I ended up hitting her, shoving her off me, and she grabbed a hold of my shirt as she went back and I came down on top of her and hit her in her stomach with my elbow and um, got locked up for a while in that one. But the night that I got locked up, the CO guard came in and said, your mom's in the hospital, she lost the baby. So that's something I dealt with a long time. Um, so when I decided I was done with everything, I was standing out of my mom's house again, and I had a bunch of, you know, I, 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 was, I was 17. My, actually, after I got jumped, my dad, I got locked up, and my dad came in to, the, um, to juvie, and he was begging and crying, and I never seen my dad cry not once. And he came in crying and asked me to stop the gang shit, stop all the bullshit. You know, my dad was poor injured when he was at work and we lived poor like we went from a middle class family to divorce to poor to living in an apartment to just you know and so five hundred dollars to him to offer to me for a car to, if i get my ged was a big deal to me and i was like at the point where i was just done with that shit anyways and so i told him i'd do it and i had to go back to another foster home and i went and got my ged and made him proud um, so that's the only reason I did get my GED really was because I was forced but it was an accomplishment and he was proud of me so <clears throat> um, and then I had my son at 17 and I was living at I was living out south I got my first job at, uh, right at 18 um, trying to do good Still had a house full of guns. Still had to. Still had that mentality. Still living that lifestyle, and um, still hanging out with everybody. And I ended up stealing a car. My brother, little brother, and my one of my friends. Um, we stole a car, and my we we were all wasted. We beer bombed some lovely oldie, and uh, went. We were walking to another friend's house. Guy left his car running. We jumped in and took off. And it was a big lifted Suburban, so it was super noticeable. And so we got to my friend's house, and my ex-wife, I called her and said, hey, we're coming to get you, because I stole cars all the time. And I said, we're coming to get you. And she's like, how? And I said, we 
stole a car, and she's like, um, if you get in that, I got a bad feeling. If you get in that, we're done. So I went out, wiped off my prints, and everybody called me pussy with and blah, blah, blah. And I jumped out, and as soon as I jumped out and they took off, there was more cops than I've ever seen come for a stolen car. You know, I was just like, oh my God, there's cops everywhere. And they took them at high speed, blah, blah, blah. They ended up both going to McLaren for a year, my brother and my friend. And uh, that's what the moment I realized, holy shit, I'm just a couple pa days past 18. And I had a pretty big record for the juvenile. And so I was like, I definitely would have gone to prison. You know, so I, 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 and I got a kid, you know, so I'm like, all right, I got to change my lifestyle. And, and I hadn't yet, but I went and got a job. And finally, I got my first job at 18. I, I started at the Plasma Center, actually. Um, I sold drugs. I sold drugs my whole, whole life, really. Um, it's big in my family, always has been, still is. Um, and so, I sold drugs out of the Plasma Center. And I learned how to make, that was my main source of income, really. I sold it out the back door. And I just worked in the lab, and I was the one paying people. So I would, they'd throw me how much they wanted, and I'd slide it under the clipboard, take their cash out of the register, hand them the clipboard, and the drugs would be under the clip. And it was all day long for years. And um, so that was my main source of income. I, that's how I supported my kid, my ex. You know, we got our first par apartment. I was 18, she was 17, she couldn't be on the lease. And so the, the apartment complex decided he was going to give us a chance, moved us into the one connected to the office. Um, we lived there for a while. I sold drugs the whole time. And then people started coming around saying, hey, everybody knows you're, you're about to get busted. And so we packed up and moved and um, moved out south. And then um, I still sold drugs. And um, I ended up moving next door to my boss and she drank nonstop. She was a major alcoholic, um, still is. And so my, my drinking progressed. I, at the apartment complex where I lived, I ended up having to quit smoking weed because I caught a DUI uh, two weeks after I turned 18. Um, after getting in a fight, I'm kind of jumping around, getting in a fight and beating these two guys real bad and beating, breaking their nose with a tequila bottle, all this stuff, and then I ended up robbing a chick, and leaving there, I got a DUI, um, because I took all her alcohol, too, and drank it, um, so, that was actually the first time I had to go to Marion County, and I had realized, I'm so done with that life, I just finally got off paper, and now I'm doing it as an adult, and so, um, I just, that's when I ended up deciding to change everything and try to try to live right. And I went through the diversion program, and I, I was living with my kid, and my ex-wife at the time, and I was doing everything right. And then, like, I had a job. I mean, I was still selling drugs, so I guess I wasn't doing everything right, but um, just trying to be not not the gangbanger fucking idiot I was being, and. Um, I, I went through the diversion program, had a breathalyzer in my vehicle for a year, and a week before I got out of uh, where I was going to graduate the treatment, I decided to smoke weed, failed it, had to do the whole rehab again, and I faked it the whole way through anyways. I was drinking the whole time, falsifying piss tests, um, just anything to get through, and so I had to do it again, and I did the same thing again, and um, I just figured out how to manipulate the whole thing. Um, so I ended up, I ended up graduating that and I ended up getting off paper for the first time since I was 12 years old. Um, I ended up still working at the Plasma Center, had my second kid. Um, so we ended up moving out of that place and moving out south even further to a three bedroom place. And the only way I could afford it was to sell more drugs. And so I just got bigger and started moving pretty good weight, moving it from state to state a little bit, and um, did that for a long time. And then uh, 
my ex-wife hated, hated me because I drank all the time and I was aggressive. Um, I was still pretty young and I still had the gang mentality and all that, all that attitude. Um, I, never, I never put hands on her ever, but I just was aggressive and just hated myself. So um, we ended up, I had four detectives come to my house while I was at work um, looking for me. And so my neighbor had called me while I was at work and said, you got detectives here looking for you. So I bailed out of work, took off, and hid for a while. Came home, I had, I had a bunch of shit in the garage. And so um, I, tried, I threw a barbecue and had everybody come over and everybody took shit out with them. Um, that was the only way I could think of to not get caught with all that. And so that's what we did. And we, Got did that, got rid of it all, and I ended up quitting selling drugs at that time. That's when I decided I was done. I still, I still did them, but um, I quit. I skipped so much stuff, um, but when so then I couldn't afford that place, so I had to move to another place, and I moved a lot. I still, I, I love to move a lot. I like change. I, I don't, I, I don't like to be stuck in one. I'm always looking for change. I'm always looking to fill a void. Still, still do the same thing, but I'm learning. Um, so I was, I was moving a lot, and I, I moved to another place, and I decided to quit my job and try to do the stay-at-home dad shit and do a part-time job, and I was doing uh, DNA testing for Division of Child Support and had my ex-wife go to work, and uh, that lasted like eight months. And then I, I, I saw my daughter... I was watching my kid and my son and my daughter and my son was riding his bike and my ex-wife went to work for T-Mobile. And so um, I had two phones and I was doing my voicemail on one, watching my son ride his bike and I was smoking a cigarette and it was summertime. And my daughter was asleep on the couch while she got up and she was only one years old, went upstairs looking for me and fell off the window right in front of me and hit the ground. That one there has stuck with me all my life. Um, so she, she was all right, but like she fell right in between a couple of things and just hit the ground and started screaming. And I dropped both my phones, picked her up, brought her in, called 911, um, and everything was recorded. And I didn't know it until the next day when I heard it all and I broke. Um, so like that has always stuck in my head. It's just something my dad shouldn't see, you know, um, or anyone. But um, so anyway, so I ended up saying screw this and going back to work. And I started working at Marigold. Um, I'm heavy drinker by then. I mean, I'm so like I drink every day all day since I was well, since I quit smoking weed at 20 or whatever. So I drink, I picked it up, and started drinking. And I, I drank till I was 33 nonstop every day. Um, so, I mean, I was, and I, I, at the time, I'm like, I'm not an alcoholic, even though I don't have any, I don't have any money, because I'm working part-time, my ex-wife's working full-time, and I'm using her credit card to buy alcohol, and she's, you know, bitching at me, and I'm still, I don't have a problem. And uh, so I ended up going to work, and I started doing, working swing shift, and that's when I slowed down a little bit on drinking, um, quit smoking weed, and that's what it was, and for the job, and I never, I never went back to weed ever since, but I became even a heavier drinker. Um, so I don't know about a year and a half into that or we ended up that's when I got married um, at the time when I was working at Miracle and then not even not even six months later um, after getting married my ex-wife or my, uh, had a neighbor move in and I had um, I'd been this this place for like three years I had a neighbor move in and I was I had a friend from Seattle come down and we were partying whatever and he came over and came out of too so I just fucking knocked him out of my doorstep and got myself kicked out and so my ex-wife was gonna divorce me we had massive hospital bills from my daughter falling out the window and so I just took off to Seattle and said I'm gonna take off and she moved in with her parents and I went and learned how to do flooring and came back three months later and we got our first house together. Um, I ended up even getting in drinking more, and I started 
I had a kegerator, pool tables, blah, blah, I just, alcohol was my whole life. Like, I didn't even pay attention to my kids. It was work and alcohol, work and alcohol, um, and party. And, uh, but my business took off. I learned how to be a functioning alcoholic. I could, I learned how to make a lot of money. So then I became even more, even, even worse of a person because now I had money and I'd never had it. And so I got this cocky ass attitude and I became, I had lost a lot of friends that way. Um, and I would just buy my ex-wife off, shut up, go buy something. And I just became a, pe a real piece of shit. And I, I'd rather have, not even be around my kids or my ex-wife. I wanted to sit and drink all the time. I had a kegerator, I'd just sit there and drink and just, that was my life um, and go to work. And so my kids didn't really get a, get me very much. And I was doing the same thing I promised myself I wouldn't do. I was falling in the same patterns as my parents. And I said, I will spend time with my kids and I didn't, you know. Um, anyways, I ended up with the business, ended up taking off pretty good and ended up buying, purchasing my first house after that place. And um, that's when, when I purchased my first house, it was only two years old. We remodeled it a little bit, and that was when I actually, I probably for the first time, really felt like I connected with my wife. Um, we're doing the home shit and all that. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, doing the fun stuff with the kids, doing the sports on the weekends, and, uh, but I still drank and figured out a way to make sure we were home by five and made sure I always had alcohol at the hotel rooms or wherever we were staying and all that stuff. Um, so we remodeled that house and I sold it two years later, made, six, made like 60 grand, built another house. And I just kept getting more, more greedy. Like I, I, all I thought was money. I didn't think about family. I didn't care that much, you know, but like all I thought was money. That's how I was going to make them happy. You know, I bought quads. I, we went riding all the time. But I made sure that there was friends there. There was a lot of drinking there. You know, all that. Um, so I built a house. And that, that became, that house is probably where the most stress started. And um, I started really getting angry at life. Um, my dad had just gotten sick. So I was just already numbing that out, knowing he was dying, um, getting aggressive again. I had my ex-wife go to work because my mortgage payment was so big, because um, I bit off more than I wanted to, I guess. And so I, all, I had to work even more. Um, and so she went to work for a bar, at a bar, and that was not good. So I ended up never getting cut off, down there all the time. And then doing coke in there every night. Um, started getting really in, heavy into coke. So then I started the whole drug thing again. So there we go into that cycle. Um, and I had, then I decided I was gonna start my store, um, my flooring stores. And I opened those up and it caused even more stress on myself. And all I did is down there is I hid out and drank in my office all day, all night, whatever, um, and just kept getting worse. And then, and then my dad, uh, he ended up dying. And so I started taking pills and, um, to kind of numb that out. And I took any kind of pill you could have, any kind of pill there is. My mom's does pills. She still does pills. Um, you can get them anytime. So she would just hand me pills all the time. And then I, I started getting into, Oxy's real bad, and I started selling them, um, and I was doing a lot. Like I was, I, would, I, I freaking was doing a lot, um, and then I, I ended up walking away from my house, shutting down my stores. Well, I didn't shut down the stores yet. I walked away from my house, got into a rental, and um, that's. The house that I called the dungeon. It was where it all started. The worst of the worst for me. Um, I mean, I grew up. Like I mean, I grew up a lot shittier than I. I have. I skipped a lot of stuff. Um, 
kind of went blank and kind of got upset on some things, so I kind of jumped. Um, but when I moved to this house, it was, you know, what, something I'm not used to. It was embarrassing to me. And I put 15000 of my own money into it just to upgrade it, just to my kids and have, it would be like kind of what they were used to. And of course it added more stress, more, more, more shit on me. And um, it, had, it had nothing but trees everywhere. There was no grass, no nothing. It was dark all the time. So it was depressing all the time. And I was already heavy into my pills. And then I had a friend of mine from Seattle, the one taught me how to do flooring, moved to Salem. He had already gone through the pill thing. And so when he got there, he kind of justified it for me. And I started getting real deep into it and picking up more and more and more. And he worked for me, lived with me, and we were sneaking pills all the time. Then we started talking about selling drugs again. So I started selling drugs again. Uh, just weed, but I mean, it became big and fast. Um, a lot. So we started moving it back to Seattle and down to California and having people make their runs um, and make a lot of money quickly. And then he moved out and um, we we're still doing it together though. We we're still doing it. And I, I said I'd never ever do, you know, I was so shocked that I ever even did pills like Oxys. And then um, I said I'd never do heroin, never do heroin. Well, then the day came where I ran out of pills. And so one of the guys that worked for me was already in heroin. And so I said, fuck it, I'm getting sick right now. So just I'll hit it, you know, and off of running, I went with that. Um, fuck who needs pills, you know, heroin is easier to get and it's freaking, it ain't cheaper. I don't, I don't know. Everybody says it's cheaper, but it ain't cheaper. Um, I ended up taking pretty much everything I was selling and profiting plus my store that I had and I was paying, I was spending $400 a day on heroin just for myself. And, um, you know, I promised myself I'd never shoot, I'd never shoot. And I never shot heroin. I smoked it. Um, but then <laughs> I got so deep into heroin that I was spending every dime I had. I was racing her. I was lying nonstop, you know, again, not with the family, nodding out with the family. They got to watch that as I fall asleep in my ice cream. My ex-wife would say, 17 years together and you don't eat sweets, you never have. And now you're eating ice cream and chocolate every night and your pupils are pinned out. What are you on? You know, and I always lied. And she knew, but I would deny it the whole time. And then uh, she caught me one night and I said I was smoking Oxy when it was hair and whatever. And so she kicked me out. And she actually packed my bags and told me, you're not gonna, something bad's about to happen. She watched me OD a few times or, you know, puking nonstop, can't breathe, you know, going out, whatever. And um, so she said, something bad's about to happen. You're not gonna, I don't think you're gonna survive through the weekend. So she, I came home and she packed my bags and told me I couldn't even come in the house. I was like, whatever. So I, I went down and grabbed my RV and went and parked it behind one of my stores. Um, well, actually my old store my partner that was Granite Company um, let me park it back there and um, and then I came back to my shit and you know she gave me one last she gave me a kiss goodbye and said you're gonna die and I left there like whatever you're fucking retarded and I left there went and got RV set up next day I was depressed I just lost my family like that's all I know and I just fucking got wasted and fucking all day smoking heroin all day taking so much volumes all that drinking all day and realized that I didn't have a long enough, that evening I realized I didn't have a long enough hose to uh, run to the, sh to the spigot so I could take a shower. So I decided I was gonna drive up to Walmart and get a hose and go to Carl Jr. and get a burger. And on my way back, I got hit by an Amtrak train. Uh, I was fucking taking a hit of heroin, knotted out, went through a barricade. My airbags went off. Everything in my van hit the back of me. I'm knocked out on the center, high center on the tracks. And um, where it was is out South Salem, um, over off Boone Road and 36. So there's like no houses. It's, it's behind Foster Auto Parts. There's nothing there except for businesses. But there was one house next to the uh, dog grooming place and they, they're the ones that watch the dog. And there's just one lady. 
and she heard me hit that cable um, and her sons were there and they came out whatever and I'm out cold and um, I can all of a sudden I wake up I can hear screaming get out get out get out and I wake up and I, I can't breathe I can't see anything um, and I just hear this lady screaming get out and who the fuck is screaming and then I I finally heard her, heard what she was saying, and I look out and I see that fucking light right in my face. I'm like, oh shit! And I jump out of my van, and right then it hit. And I don't know how how I made it out. I don't know. I don't really remember much. Um, I remember waking up like way the fuck further than I jumped um, in the bushes, bloody, you know, through the sticker bushes. I, I really don't know what happened. Um, I can't really explain that. I just remember looking up and seeing my vehicle in the air, hit a telephone pole, um, fire everywhere, fucking beer cans in the bushes everywhere. But I drink it all day and I drive. I mean, every day I drove home from Portland, Eugene, wherever I was, I had an open beer in my car, um, in my van. And so I fucking stand there like, oh my God, did this really just happen? And and there's sirens everywhere, and all I see is beer everywhere in the bushes, and I fucking run up, and I just start trying to grab them, and there's so many, I'm just like, I give up. And these two dudes run up, and they they um, say, hey, you got drugs in the car? I said, yeah. And they fucking found me a rock, I busted out the rest of the windshield, got in there, found it immediately, threw it to them, they stashed it for me. Um, and then the uh, first, First fire truck to pull up, um, all I hear is Johnny. And I go, oh, fuck my life. And I look, and I'm like, what's up? And he goes, what the hell happened? I know that, I knew the uh, fireman. And um, then just massive cops, news is there. Um, I'm surrounded by massive cops and they, um, they can't get me on a DUI. They don't, they don't, well, they probably could have. They didn't give me a uh, breathalyzer or anything, but they, I sobered up immediately. Like, I mean, I walking and talking just fine, talk my way right out of it. I got a careless driving ticket out of the deal. Um, if they would have looked, they would have noticed all the beer cans were open. Not, I said they exploded. I just bought those, you know, da da da. But if they would have looked, they were all open. Um, but I got away with it. And um, I don't know how far it made it on the news. I know friends down in California, family down in California. I know a bunch of people in Seattle. I mean, I, it made it pretty far. Uh, on the news, um, actually, that year, when, that was March 25th, 2013. Um, that year, New Year's, well, okay, after that, I went to rehab in Astoria. Um, I decided my ex-wife begged me to go to rehab, so I went. I, did, I skated through, faked it through, made it my 45 days in the inpatient, graduated, got the hell out of there, and I got back and tried to please the ex-wife, tried to do it for the kids and the ex-wife. That didn't work, obviously. Um, can't, can't do it. I wasn't ready. Um, I did quit heroin though. Um, I did heroin and pills for about a year and a half. Um, and at that time when I was doing that, I started going right back to when I, when my ex-wife kicked me out and all that shit, I went right back to what I knew. I fucking purchased guns. I went right to the spots that I knew. I acted the same way that I did as a kid. I rolled around with guns, I did stupid shit, I fucking hurt a few people. Um, it's weird how it works. I, I, I was shocked later that I thought about it. I'm like, I just went right back to what I knew. And same type of area. And uh, so <clears throat> I went to rehab, graduated in Astoria, um, got out, never did heroin, never did heroin again. Um, but it would only took me about a week and I tried math um, at a friend's house and first first time I said off and running I went and um, hid that but couldn't hide it very well and so the ex-wife was trying to work it out with me and that's when she said I'm fucking done with you we're divorcing and um, so while on heroin and well oh, I forgot to skip some while on heroin I caught a few charges, um, two, three DUIs in one month. Uh, I got away with one of them, so I only caught two that I got charged with. So that put me back on paper. 
for the first time after 16 years of being an adult. I'm back on paper. And I, could, I didn't take it serious. I thought it was like, just like I was a juvenile. So instantly I'm in jail nonstop. And I haven't been in jail since I was 18 years old to 33. And all of a sudden I'm in jail nonstop. And uh, so, which lovely Polk County was my, usually where I ended up. Um, Cause I was the first place I got on paper. And I ended up on paper in Marion County, Polk County, and Lynn County. So I'm still on paper in Lynn County. The rest I have gotten off of. Um, so I got to make a three round tour all the time. Um, so I ended up getting divorce papers while in, in jail. And I mean, I cried like a little girl in the cell um, because my whole life is just in shambles and I don't know how to stop this. Um, so I get out and I let the divorce happen. I didn't fight for marriage. I was too into my habit and wasn't gonna stop. And so I tricked myself into pretty much telling myself I didn't love her anymore, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I let the divorce happen. And for the next three years, it's really actually a blur. Like, um, well, for six months, I actually, after the divorce, for six months, I locked myself in my mom's house. So like I never, left. Um, I just stayed high in the bedroom because I didn't know how to live without my family. I got real suicidal, attempted it a couple times, half-ass attempted it, we'll say, actually, um, because I didn't really want to do it all the way. Um, and then she kicked me out. I beat her husband up, and I beat the neighbor up. So I got kicked out. I kicked, got kicked out of there. And so that was like the first time I'd been homeless, didn't actually have anywhere to go, and well, it just, life just kept getting worse, more depressing, and everybody turned their back on me, and, which they had every right, um, and now I have no one to turn to, and life really got shitty. Um, living in my car, homeless guy in a Mercedes, um, you know, at least I had a nice car to sleep in, um, until I lost that. Um, but yeah, I still thought I was okay. And I said I'd never slam dope. And I started slamming dope, you know? And then that took me to a whole new level. And then uh, I always had warrants, you know? And got, I was an idiot and had the Mercedes registered in my name. So wondering how they're getting me all the time. Um, so then I ended up I lost my car nine times and I, I got it out nine times and that's probably about a thousand bucks a pop which I could have bought the car fucking over and over it wasn't that nice I mean it was nice but it wasn't that expensive so I kept having to have my car because it's my only way to live you know and um, anyways so I ended up taking the cops on a high speed chase in my Mercedes and lost that um, I didn't get caught actually in the chase, I got away, but they found me after parked hiding and they shattered my window out, drug me out, and fucking took my car and I never got it back. Um, so now I'm walking homeless. All my clothes were in there. And now I have a fucking pair of slippers when I got released and the clothes on my back. Um, and I did that for quite a while um, until I conned. My mom ended up helping me get a car. I'm going to get a job. I fucking bought a Beamer. Um, got a good deal on it. And instantly, I'm fucking right back in jail. They fucking own my car. Doing the same old shit. Lost that one. Um, really, after that, I kept getting, uh, let's see, after that, I ended up fucking going to jail again, and I said, this is my last time, I'm done, and I fucking went to jail in Lynn County, and I said, that's it, I had heard about Oxford, and I decided I'm going to give it a try, I'm, I'm done, and I fucking get out, I relapsed the fucking, probably about an hour after I got out, and ended up fucking sick as shit, um, and so I quit, and went, let my, called my mom and let me stay at her house for three days so I could get past the UA. And I got into Oxford and 
it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, I started learning about life again and how to um, just to re rebuild, you know. Um, and I, I, I stayed in Oxford for nine months and clear enough to clear up my mind some and started my business again. And I, I, I set some goals for myself and I'm accomplishing them every day. Um, I'm back in flooring, I'm back to running a business. Um, I found a whole new family, um, a wonderful family by the way. Um, and I go to I go to I was going to meeting re regularly. I've kind of slowed down a little bit. That's mainly because of business, though, but also because I make I've been making you know some poor decisions sometimes. But I'm we started we're starting a step study group and we are going to this is the year for growth. So <laughs> I'm going to make some major changes this year. Um, I made it to a year on s Sunday. Yep. So yeah, the 24th, um, and I look back now, and I'm, I'm rebuilding right now. Like I'm rebuilding a relationship with my ex-wife and my kids, and I, I can't imagine ever going back to that again. Seeing my kids smile and being able to hand them fucking money like I just did to, for my daughter's prom or whatever it is, prom is coming up or whatever, and just being able to do that shit again makes me feel like a man again. And I, I have these goals that I'm setting, and I'm not fucking stopping. And whenever I feel like I'm going to struggle or I'm struggling, I don't even have to call my fucking friends. They know by the way I'm talking and they are on top of it. And then they get me into meetings and it fucking works. Like it, every time I go to a meeting, it's exactly what I need to hear at that exact moment. It's just crazy how God works in your life. And I'm learning that as I go, though. Um, Still making, still making them addict, still doing the addict behavior, still making the same decisions, just doing it in clean. And so I've got to learn and do my step work um, as much as possible and learn to be the person that I was supposed to be. Um, so I know I skipped a lot in that because there's a whole bunch of shit that I have in there that probably shouldn't say and probably should have said though for sure um so i had my ex-wife jot this stuff down and i skipped through a whole shit ton of my life but when i choke up i freaking i jumped so but um that's really about all i have yeah.